Sermon for May 14th, Mother's Day, 2023, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and blessed Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. It is also Mother's Day, so I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to mothers one and all. We'll again be reading our text from the fourth gospel, the Gospel of John, now, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21. To read along, pause the video, get out your Bible, look up John, chapter 14, and push play when you're ready to begin. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The text we are reading today comes directly after last Sunday's gospel lesson, in which Jesus assured his disciples that though he was leaving them to return to his Father, he would assuredly return to bring them to that same house. Asked how this could be, he explained that the way to what we call heaven is none other than himself, that he, Jesus, is the way the truth, and the life. Continuing to teach and exhort them, Jesus, in today's text, links love for him with obedience to him. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, he said. He further promises that they would receive the spirit of truth from his Father, a spirit who would never leave them. As we read these promises that Jesus makes to his disciples, we have every right to claim them for ourselves. We are among the many people who believe in Jesus because of the testimony of his disciples. As such, we are clearly identified in John's chapter 17, where Jesus prays, I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's verse 20. And what does Jesus pray there for us? It is nothing other than that we be united in our faith in him. So what exactly might that mean? Some would say, and do say, that it means we all should be in the same Christian club, no denominations. Everyone under the authority of one individual, such as a pope, or one group, such as a council, my view is that nowhere does Jesus say that. I could be wrong, but this is my view. Our unity should be in faith in, trust in, love for Jesus. We are to be united in and through Jesus. Look once more at the text. Notice verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans, he wrote. I will, I mean, he said, I come to you. Jesus promises that even though he is not physically present with us for now, he will not desert us, but will come to us. Now read on to verse 19. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. As believers in and followers of Jesus, we have a privilege that our unbelieving friends do not have. Perhaps you have even had a conversation with someone who does not see God the way you do. It's as though your eyes of faith give you special knowledge that others do not have. 
Isn't that distinction precisely what Jesus describes in verse 19? The world that will see Jesus no more is these unbelieving folks. You who will see me are those of us who do trust in him and through eyes of faith look forward to life with him forever. What amazing promises Jesus gives us here. When we doubt our future, Jesus gives us reassurance. When our faith wavers, Jesus gives us his Holy Spirit to strengthen that faith. His love is our assurance. His promise grounds our hope, our optimism, our faith. Because I live, you also will live, he tells us. But there's more. Reread verses 20 and 21. Now look again at verse 21. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Here is a powerful counter to the idea that our works save us. In fact, it's just the opposite. Our works are evidence of our love for God. They do not earn God's love but show that we love God, and God loves us. As I told you last Sunday, I'm writing this sermon from Philmont Scout Ranch, a high adventure camp of the Scouts BSA, formerly the Boy Scouts of America. In addition to our motto of Be Prepared, Scouts BSA is known for its oath and law, which together sum up what it means to be a member. We do not earn membership by following the oath and law. Rather, we follow the oath and law because we are a member. In the same way, it is because we love God that we follow God's commandments, not the other way around. As we live now six weeks into the Easter season, it is because we love Jesus and Jesus loves us that we follow his commandments through God's help and by God's grace, and with the Holy Spirit guiding our steps. On this sixth Sunday of Easter, may we often be reminded that Jesus is always with us, even as he is with his Father and the Holy Spirit. And through our trust in obedience to him, God is truly glorified in Jesus. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.